Before we went dark, I shared with you that we were beginning a new series here on Coffee with Dr. Scott. And today is the start of that new series. And it's one I'm really excited about because I know that you're going to love it. And I know that you're going to get so much out of it. I'm Dr. Scott, the personal development and business growth coach for chiropractors. And you're watching Coffee with Dr. Scott. Are you here because you'd like to know what the one thing that all successful chiropractors have in common is? Then you're definitely in the right place. That and more is coming up on the show here shortly. But first, I'd love to hear your answers to the questions of the day. Question of the day is, what does Memorial Day mean to you? Uh, so I'd love for you to put that in the comments down below while I get my stuff all set up here. I see Taryn has already joined me. Robert and Tyler are joining me as well. Uh, so again, what does Memorial Day mean to you? And I'll probably get some uh, emotional responses there. I know for me, it's somewhat newfound, uh, my appreciation for Memorial Day. Obviously, Memorial Day means to me uh, barbecue and spending some time at the pool. As you can tell, I spent a little time at the pool this weekend with the kids. Uh, and we put some barbecue on. So that's all fun and exciting. Um, but I think I have a newfound appreciation for Memorial Day. Uh, I would have to say September 11th probably kicked it off. Before that, I don't know if I had an appreciation for, for Memorial Day, if I'm being honest. Um, I don't think I thought about military service much at all as a youth. Uh, I know I was of uh, draft age during uh, Desert Storm, so you know we were all worried we were gonna get drafted in, in, in college, but didn't think much about it other than that. Um, definitely after September 11th, and since then, with the things that go on with our world, I've got a new appreciation for it. Um, I have nobody military in my family, so it's just never been something I've been around. Um, my wife's father, however, was over last night, and he's a veteran, and, and he's done some really, really cool things, both in service and then since then, uh, just been rewarded with some honor flights and stuff like that. That's just really cool. So uh, I know it made me very emotional last night, even just to thank him for his service. And uh, again, obviously, I wasn't, uh, didn't spend my whole life with him, but I do thank all veterans for their service. Uh, for me, it, it, as I look, as I've aged and matured, Memorial Day has taken on new meetings. Uh, I still appreciate the barbecue and time at the pool, uh, but I really do start to appreciate uh, the freedoms that we're given in this country. And again, seeing how easily they can be taken away by something like September 11th or other terrorist acts, uh, I really appreciate having uh, all of them uh, serve and protect those freedoms for us. So hopefully you all feel the same way. Let's see here. Tyler says, honoring our fallen soldiers and the start of summer activities. Yes, great. Uh, you know, and we didn't go this year, but we have a military um, graveyard not too far from here. And they put all the flags out. Oh, my God, it's so touching. Um, we went out there probably three years ago and drove through. So I really wish we had taken the kids out there this year. And hopefully they'll keep it decorated. Maybe we'll take them out in the next day or two. Uh, although, I don't have, uh, anyways. So if you're just joining us, the question of the day is, what does Memorial Day mean to you? Please put it in the comments down below. Feel free to uh, honor uh, fallen soldiers, uh, veterans, uh, anybody who, who, who has served us and protected our freedoms uh, in the comments down below. I would appreciate it as well. Uh, so again, for me, that's um, beginning of summer. All those things are, 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 are fun, but would happen without Memorial Day. Uh, it has changed quite a bit. You know, Memorial Day for me, just to go back in time again kind of before 2001 even no right around that time frame i still worked memorial day um my office employee manual did not have memorial day or labor day off those were not uh, guaranteed days off for my staff uh, and the reason for that was uh, that they're like two of the busiest days of my year uh, so I was always focused on work during those days. And again, not to think about it as Memorial Day, but just as, as that day off, nobody else is working. Uh, so they all swung into the office uh, and got their adjustment. Uh, a couple of years, we actually did adjustments outside when the weather wasn't too crazy underneath a tent. Uh, had a barbecue and, and actually made some fun out of it and, and had a great day. So I used to not let my, my staff have, I shouldn't say that. We had a half day so people could barbecue in the afternoon, but uh, we always saw patients and, and had a great day on Memorial Day. One of my, something I look forward to uh, work-wise as well. Uh, so let's see, traveling-wise, tours coming up. I'm out on tour right now, obviously. Been talking about it a lot. Got a few trips coming up. I'll tell you more about those this week. But today I leave for South Bend, Indiana, Elkhart, actually. Uh, so I'll be out in northern Indiana, southern uh, Michigan, southwest Michigan, uh, as well this week. So I'll be coming to you live from out there. So if you know any coffee shops out there, please let me know. 
Uh, I would love for each of you to, to catch the show every morning, uh, whether I'm on tour or not. So I want to quickly run through and let you know how you can get notifications for the show. Now that we're coming off the business page, um, it might be a little bit more difficult to find me. So first, go to my page, Cairo Launch uh, Facebook page. Click on the like button if you haven't already. Then click on the following button. Uh, scroll down after you hit the following button and click on I'd like you to click on see first uh, so that every day you see this up here and we don't post much other than the show uh, so you'll see this notification first and then make sure all notifications are on this will almost ensure that you get notifications when I go live um, with the new algorithm it's not foolproof though so if you want to be hundred percent sure that you never miss a show uh, you can click the link in the comments and subscribe to get messages to notify you about the show now, as you know, I don't want to annoy anyone, so don't expect a message every single day from me. Uh, but I'll keep you up to date. You know, we get, like I said, we probably get like a message a, uh, every week or so, um, just letting you know what the shows are and what's going on. So coming up in just a few minutes, for those who are just joining me, I'm diving into the answer to the big question, which is what do all successful chiropractors have in common? So stick around for that in a few more minutes uh, to find out the answer to that and more. Let's see who else has joined us here. Actually, I've got the wrong... Set up here. Kenneth joining as well. Tyler and Robert on. Good to see you all. Um, so if you're a doc who's looking to grow their business and you're needing some one-on-one help, one -on -one help with that, uh, I'm here for you as well. I don't often mention it on the show. So if you're a new viewer, you might not even have a clue that I actually provide coaching to chiropractors. My coaching program has been designed around keeping things as simple and as easy as possible for my coaching clients. Uh, when you sign up, you get an awful lot of me. Uh, you get access to all of my courses. Perfect case acceptance, which we went through in January and February. Referral mastery, uh, which we just finished up with, and all the rest of them, including the course that uh, this new series we're starting in a few minutes is based off of. And that's just the tip of the iceberg, and I, and I won't take too long to go into it here, but there is a video that explains it thoroughly, and you can click the link in the comments to watch it if you're interested uh, in my coaching. So now, let's get on to the meat and potatoes of this show. There's a pretty significant difference in today's chiropractic world versus what I would call the old days. Now, I'm not that old, um, but things have changed quite a bit since, since I started practicing back in 1996. Uh, so managed care has created a lot of obstacles for docs in today's world. But during my time as a practicing chiropractor and my time traveling the country and studying the most successful practices around, I found one thing to be true. The most successful doctors out there have one thing in common. They all have a well-trained and highly motivated staff and teams that they put together, that have learned the value of working together towards the success of the practice. Think about the movie, The Terminator. Most of you have probably seen it, right? Uh, it's basically this huge battle between good and evil. You use that to think about the battle that we face today as chiropractors with managed care or insurance companies. The managed care machines have now generated endless streams of paperwork for you. And it can almost seem like a constant battle to, you know, that's just full of hassles and obstacles for you to get payment. And you have to endlessly adapt to the insurance company's tactics of stall and delay. A very common scenario that I run into across my travels goes something like this. The doctor complains that their staff is costing them too much money for the work that they do. Then that same staff will pull me aside and they will tell me that they feel underpaid for the amount of work that they have to do and for the stress that they have to deal with in dealing with their doctor. Basically, no one's happy in that situation. The doctor and the staff both feel like they're being taken advantage of. There might even be some of you watching right now who have grown cynical regarding your own staff because you've tell, just dealt too long with their slacking uh, or their bad attitudes. The essential point here is that it takes the staff being part of a team to really make this work. No practice can really reach the level of success that you'd like to if the doctor and the staff are on opposite sides. So how do you get there? Do you have to build a new team from scratch? Do you have to go out and hire well-trained and highly motivated employees from other companies in order to get your uh, office to the place where everyone in your office is working towards a common goal, you know, that success that you're looking for? So how do you do that? Well, be sure to subscribe like I just told you how to do. Subscribe to the show. Either click the link down below or just go over and make sure you get the notifications turned on and join me back here tomorrow to learn the answer to that question. I'm going to be here every weekday giving you the answers to the questions that you need to grow your staff to the highly successful team that you need to launch your practice. Y'all have a good day. I'll see you tomorrow.